Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. This is the newest Mac Mini with the M2 Pro chip. And as someone who has always been a fan of the Mini, especially in the last couple of years, having owned and used the M1 version a ton, I've been eagerly awaiting the day that I could get my hands on one of these bad boys. My workflow can get pretty demanding, whether that's making these videos, doing design and 3D work or software development, which is why I wanted to see if I could customize one of these machines with the M2 Pro to fit just under the cost of two of the higher end base model Pro machines. This particular Mac Mini is priced at $1899, $100 cheaper than both the base Mac Studio and 14 inch MacBook Pro. And while there's some obvious advantages and disadvantages between all of these models, there are some things that I think set the new M2 Pro Mac Mini apart, not only with some performance metrics, but from more of a practical standpoint. Having said that, after owning multiple Mac Minis over the years, there's been a few pain points that I've had in the past with the Mac Mini, some of which have been cleared up and others that are still kicking around. Today, I'm getting into all that, why I chose this particular model over all those other options, how it addresses my needs, and hopefully helps some folks out who are shopping for a new Mac. So with that said, let's get into it. All right, so let's kick things off as to why I bought this machine. About a month or so ago, I reviewed the 14 inch MacBook Pro that also has the M2 Pro chip in it. And at that time, I thought that that was gonna be my main workhorse, but the universe had different plans for me. Literally right after I posted the review for that laptop, I started getting these weird memory issues where the machine would just constantly say that I was running out of system memory, even though I had lots of memory left and it would lock up on me over and over. I tried multiple things to fix the issue, but nothing seemed to work. There's definitely something weird going on there probably just a defective unit or something. I haven't really seen anyone else have those problems. So I just cut my losses and returned it. And instead of just swapping it out for another one, I decided to give things a little more thought because almost all my work is done at my desk and I've got everything set up there how I want it. I started thinking about what I could gain by going with a desktop machine versus a laptop. The MacBook Pro base starts with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD, which is a decent starting point. But for a hundred bucks less, I could grab a Mac mini and bump that up to 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. That's a pretty big bump because not only is it doubling up the memory and storage, but we now know that the one terabyte drive is basically double the speed of the 512 gig base option. Something that I didn't initially know when I bought the MacBook Pro on launch because there was just no info out there. This time around, I had access to way more resources with performance data and benchmarks available on the 12 core CPU M2 Pro version and the M1 Max in the Mac Studio but also a solid reference point with the benchmarks that I'd ran on my base MacBook M2 Pro. Now, I did take a long look at the Mac Studio, which on the surface can seem like a better deal with the 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU M1 Max chip, 400 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth, and two media encoding engines for roughly the same price. But then I started digging into benchmarks. Xcode benchmark only ran a few seconds slower on my MacBook Pro M2 Pro, uh, Affinity Photo and Speedometer benchmarks were very similar, and while the Mac Studio pulls ahead quite a bit in some places, like video render times, for the most part, in the real world, there isn't a huge difference between the two. If you're side by side comparing one against the other, sure, you're gonna be able to point to one and say that one's faster, but just everyday usage without looking at benchmarks, there's gonna be some give and take between the two. So performance wise, I was actually less concerned about how the mini would stack up with the base Mac Studio. The M2 Pro is already more than enough power-wise and with 32 gigs of RAM and having a one terabyte SSD versus 512 that are in both of those base machines, it makes storage a lot more versatile. In regards to not choosing the MacBook, I know that you give up some features there as well. Obviously the MacBook has a ProMotion XDR display and has great speakers. Both the Mac Studio and the MacBook have easily accessible ports with more options like SD readers, but personally, I prefer to use a dock most of the time, and I've got one of the best docks out there already in the CalDigit TS4 that kind of negates that. That being said, on the M2 Pro version of the Mac Mini, you do have a greatly improved port selection over the base M2 and M1 versions. This is something that I really didn't like on my old M1 Mini where it only had two Thunderbolt ports, but now it's on par with the back of the Mac Studio where you have four Thunderbolt ports, two USB-A, one HDMI, one Ethernet, and one 3.5 millimeter audio output. This is actually a touch better than the Mac Studio in that regard because the HDMI port is basically like HDMI 2.1 where the Mac Studio is HDMI 2.0. So the Studio will only officially support 60 Hertz over 4K, 
where the mini will go all the way up to 240 hertz. I'm really happy that they bumped that up on the mini because if you had a monitor with a high refresh rate and you wanted to use it on the M1 version, you'd end up having to use up one of those Thunderbolt ports, which obviously isn't ideal when you only have two. Another thing to note here, the M2 Pro Mini will support up to three monitors, two via the Thunderbolt ports and one with HDMI. In contrast, if you're running the MacBook M2 Pro in clamshell mode, that will only support two monitors natively. So I'd say that's a win, but the one thing that I don't like in relation to ports is that they kept the same placement of this 3.5 millimeter jack right below the USB-A ports. If you've owned a Mac Mini in the last few years and tried to play plug in wired headphones or speakers while using those USB ports, you probably know how much of a pain that can be. You usually end up having to unplug something to get your audio cable in, and your Mac Mini will slide around on you a bit, which is still the case with it being a plastic bottom. Again, really wish they would have updated this. Because there's no rubber feet, it does move around very easily. And with it being matte plastic, it's pretty prone to scratching. So what I like to do is pick up some low profile silicon furniture tabs and stick those on so it saves it from moving around and scratching. If you don't wanna use those feet and you don't care about it sliding around on you, you can also just cut the tab off of the little protective film that comes with it and then just leave it on there but I just wanted to mention that because it does scratch up fairly easily. It sits nicely at my desk otherwise, and even though this design hasn't really been updated in over a decade, it still looks fantastic in my opinion. I will be making some changes at the desk here shortly, but as of right now, everything goes together exceptionally well. I've got my Acasis USB 4 NVMe enclosure plugged directly into the Mini that adds a little bit of extra storage space at Thunderbolt speeds, my TS4 hub, as I mentioned earlier, and the Mini is also running my LG Ultrafine 4K monitor through HDMI. So far on here, I've been doing a lot of design work, editing photos and videos, and I haven't done a ton of coding yet, just a little bit to test things out, but having the 32 gigs of RAM has been a game changer. Previous to owning the M2 Pro Mini, I had 16 gigs of RAM on most of my machines, and if I had a bunch of processes running at the same time, well, I could still do a lot of the things that I wanted to get done, I'll be hitting that 16 gig limit and using memory swapping pretty frequently. Apple does do a good job in most cases managing those scenarios, but I can't tend to slow down your system. And I could definitely say that sometimes 16 gigs, especially recently, hasn't felt like enough. This is in some pretty specific instances, like when I have Final Cut Pro open and I'm also working on thumbnails or a wallpaper set where there's a whole bunch of stuff stored in memory. Similarly, the 512 gig base SSD and some of these machines I mentioned earlier doesn't have a lot of flexibility or space if you are editing videos or have large working files. I've been working off that external USB 4 drive for all my work because Frankly, there are just times where if I put all my clips I have for making one of these videos on the internal drive, there just wouldn't be enough space. So having this one terabyte drive allows me to edit on the internal storage and then move everything over when I'm done to either my connected external drive or my network drive. Things are a lot more snappy editing on the internal drive. I get about double the speed on that one terabyte drive versus the external Thunderbolt drive that I have hooked up or the 512 gig base SSD that comes in the M2 Pro machines. In any case, this will make its way through some pretty crazy workflows. In Final Cut Pro for last week's video, I did a bunch of stacked animations and graphic overlays on top of footage and that was all super responsive where my M2 MacBook Air would likely struggle and get pretty warm, and the 16 gig M2 Pro would have been bogged down running out of memory. Video render times in my case are gonna be limited to the encoder and decoders because I'm filming everything on the Sony a7 IV in HEVC, so for a 12 to 15 minute video, you're usually looking at about 10 to 15 minutes to render out those videos, which isn't too bad. That's one area where the Mac Studio would likely be quite a bit better because it has two encoding engines, but for me, we're talking about doing that a couple times a week, so that's not a deal breaker by any means. The Mac Studio also has more GPU cores, so you're likely gonna see more performance with really GPU intensive stuff, but the M2 Pro with 16 is no slouch either. I did try out some gaming. Admittedly, I don't do any gaming at all on my Mac, but I have been asked about it, so I did throw on some Steam games that I had that were Mac compatible, like Rust, and I was actually surprised at how well it ran. It's not gonna be as good as a high-end gaming PC with a nice dedicated graphics card, but it can hold its own pretty well. Even on the 4K setting, which isn't super smooth, it's still playable with settings turned up pretty high, and dropping it down to 1440p is even better. I was also asked specifically about cloud gaming, and none of these hardware specs are really gonna matter when it comes to cloud gaming. 
The only thing that's gonna affect performance there is your network connection, which is one of the main reasons why I got this machine. A big selling feature for me over something like the Mac Studio was the Wi-Fi in this machine. I know that might sound weird, but just stick with me here for a second. So much of the time, the things that we pay attention to are hardware benchmarks, like processing power, drive speed, that kind of thing. But the thing that often affects us the most is our internet connection. I know personally, whether I'm uploading a 10 gigabyte file to YouTube, pulling down a monster repo from GitHub, or even working with network storage, having fast network speeds is a must, especially considering I pay a ridiculous amount here in Canada for a fiber gigabit connection. The M2 Pro machines all run with new Wi-Fi capable of Wi-Fi 6E, which is supposed to improve latency, bandwidth, and a whole bunch of stuff. I'm planning on doing a video that goes over all of that in more detail, but even on Wi-Fi 6, this runs considerably faster than any other Mac machine that doesn't have Wi-Fi 6E support. So while I make it marginally better benchmarks and performance on the Mac Studio, my network speeds are usually one to 200 megabytes per second faster. So with both my internet and my local storage, things move a lot quicker, which is a huge win in my books. As opposed to something like video rendering, which I'll do a couple times a week, I'm constantly uploading and downloading data, so it doesn't take long to make up for the time lost in those areas. You also have Bluetooth 5.3 in here versus 5.0 in the studio, which I've mentioned in previous videos doesn't sound like a big deal, but there is about a six year gap between both of those versions and when they were released. And just looking at things as a whole, Overall, the strengths of this machine are best suited for me personally. I know that isn't gonna be the same for everyone. For some folks, they might not even use Wi-Fi and a lot of people don't have a hub like mine or use their Mac for something completely different. But for me, with things like editing photos and video, design, 3D work, and coding, this fits perfectly and I couldn't be happier. Are there some things in here that I don't like? Sure, I don't like the placement of the audio jack, I don't like the plastic bottom, and I didn't mention the speaker at all because honestly, you should forget that it's there but these are all very minor things compared to how much you get with this machine. I'm gonna drop some links below to my favorite accessories that go with this, like the TS4 hub and just some things that I like using with a mini if you're interested at all, but please let me know in the comments down below what you use your machine for. What are some of the specs or features that you look for when you're shopping for a new machine and what do you think is most important to you? That's it for me today. If you enjoy this video, you can feel free to hit that like button if you wanna see more tech related content or if you wanna have a paper airplane making contest to see who can fly theirs the furthest, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.